We're gonna take a thousand two and a half inch brace bands and turn them into a hundred ten piece sets. There's a lot going on this week. We've got the concrete to finish from the sewer repair done in previous weeks. We've got a ton of fittings to ship out, something like a thousand brace bands. Matt's making a custom gate that I think you guys will enjoy watching. And we've got some special guests coming in from Colorado. As you saw last week, we cut a massive trench through the existing concrete so that we could get at the old sewer line, replace it with new sewer line, build it up with gravel. Now the concrete contractors come in and cut rebar into the existing concrete so that the new concrete will tie into the existing pad and be just as strong as it was before. Just like that, sewer work is done. I really appreciate the hard work put in by the guys over at DeLong Plumbing. They put in a lot of time and extra effort to make sure that we were fixed really quickly, and I appreciate that. We gotta take a lunch break today because today is Eric's one year. So not only do we gotta do a thousand of these, we also gotta take him to lunch. Party. Before we take Eric out to lunch, we need to package up a thousand bands. And with a thousand bands come a thousand band bolts. Now one thing we never realized before is there's not really a hundred sets of nuts and bolts in every package as advertised. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. A little test. This is supposed to have a hundred sets. I haven't opened it. You're gonna have to take my word for that. But it literally just came off the shelf. Let's open it up and see how many nuts and how many bolts are actually in this. There should be 100 bolts, 100 nuts. As you can see, it's unopened. So we got two, four, six, seven, four, seven, six, seven, eight, 50, halfway there, 74, 76, 98, 100. So this one was actually hey. two over. There you go. All right, we're making money here. We're making money. Definitely short on nuts. Eric thinks we're short on nuts. And he said definitely. This is what we were talking about. Eric <laughs> makes very definitive statements <laughs> that are not based in reality, but he is sure. And I'm what? right no, 100% of the time, 50% of the time. 50% <laughs> of the time, he's right every time. 22, 24, 26. Write in the comments below how many you think are going to be here. We're at 60 so far. 96, 98, 100. Eric was right. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. But well, we had two extra bolts. Six extra nuts. Now, the last box, we had nine missing bolts. Four missing nuts or something like that. So I guess we're evening out, maybe? I guess maybe this illustrates that it evens out somehow. But just know, if you get a box, one box, it will not have 100 sets of nuts and bolts. It could be more, it could be less. But there, I'm sure there's a margin of error. There's like... You know, whatever, 10% margin of error or something, so. We don't do a lot of split rail fins, but when we do, there always seems to be a last minute change. While the guys were on the site, the client called an audible and made the gates a bit larger, which means we had to upgrade them to steel frame, which we hadn't done before. But Matt was a trooper. Not only got it done, but got it done the same day we needed it. So the split rail fence is like this, where you've got the posts set in and they'd be a lot deeper and you'd bury them. Then you basically have like rails that will feed into these to hold them up. So it's all, it's an all wood fence. There's no pickets, it's just horizontal, kind of like a farm style. As always, Matt came in clutch and saved the day. All four gates done, ready to go out with the crew the next morning. Now, while Eric and I were packaging up a thousand bands, it came to our attention that the fulfillment room is getting a little tight. We need a new solution, a larger solution. 
So when we started selling online, we had two or three packages a week. So this room was pretty perfect. It was unused, it was a small room, so we couldn't use it as like storage or anything. It had a small table, and then we added a table because we went from a few shipments a week to a few shipments a day. We had more volume. Uh, then we started selling more stuff online. We brought in this handy shipping fulfillment counter. So, and it's handy, it works out really well. Unfortunately, this room's getting kind of tight. When you get two or three people in here, when we're heat shrinking and then poly bagging and then putting in boxes and then shipping, fulfilling, printing labels, there's a lot going on. And this also happens to be right outside one of our bathrooms. If you guys watched the video last week, you know we've had some plumbing issues recently and this wasn't the most pleasant room to be in one of those days. So I brought Matt and Eric in we're gonna have a conversation about where we could possibly move shipping fulfillment to. Here we go. Originally, when we bought the building, they had been using this room as a woodworking shop. So it made sense to us to also have this as a woodworking shop. And we did. Um, yeah, and we've cut some different things. We cut drawing strips, we cut little cutoffs, things like that. But we don't use it really to its full potential, like to really fill the building up. So what I'm thinking is this room becomes fulfillment room because it's four times the size of the fulfillment room now. So this has windows, so we get to see the outside. outside. It's bigger. We can run a breeze through here, which would also be nice. The garage it has, door. Yeah. That's the main one. Yeah. That's a For huge sure. part. Right now, we're not using this room to its full potential. No. You know, we don't have the dust collection system hooked up. We're not using yeah. any of that stuff. So one thing that Eric and I have been talking about, so right now when we heat shrink, we use the heat gun, basically like an oversized hair dryer, for lack of a better yeah. example. But they have like basically like baking tunnels. I like think those like moving like mm. pizza oven type pizza things. Oven. Nice. You you package it up in the heat shrink. You put it in one side of the tunnel. On the by the time it comes out the other side, it's done. So it really takes that manual task yeah, out of it. Take oven, your lunch in there in between the heat shrink. You're not heating your you're not heating your lunch out. Oh. So while this isn't exactly the plan we had for the room, it is kind of ready for it. So Improvise, I think adapt, overcome. But no, I, I think this works. We've got some stuff we need to get out of the way. We need to move, like I said, the woodworking equipment yeah. into a smaller holding room until we figure out what exactly we're gonna do with it. I just want to talk this through and see what you guys thought, make sure we're on board because when the wire work business starts up, I'm kind of handing this off to you guys. You know, because Eric mm -hmm. and I have been working really closely. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric, direct report is Matt. So in turn, I'm handing this off to the collective group. Yeah. It makes sense to me because yeah. from where we started with just a few packages a day or a couple at the beginning and the small room and seeing the, the numbers on the board, now we've got upwards of 30 a day or something. So. Um, I only see that getting bigger in time, yep. and we're going to need bigger space. So um, I think this is the spot. Uh, are there concerns you guys have? I mean, we talked about distance to shop and distance to the front office. I think it's good. I mean, the distance to the shop's not really that big of a deal because it's not too much further. All right. So overall, overall, we're thinking move it here. Two I thumbs like up it. from me. Okay. All right. Well, two for me. Well, if Eric gives it two thumbs up, <laughs> Matt gives it two thumbs up. It's got to yeah, be it good. It works. Yep. Yeah. So you guys saw it here first. If it doesn't work. It's these guys' idea. It's all the, the <laughs> boss's fault. Uh, hey, all right. hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> I like that meme, Spider-Man meme. So the plan is we move the fulfillment room. First order of business, clear out all the woodworking equipment, then bring in new tables and some new equipment that I'm excited to show you guys in upcoming videos. These are 30, so it's a little one here. And then this was just open. So behind the scenes look, but then I fill in the gaps. So prior to that, our our, uh, our record was 28. We had two record 28 days, and then yesterday was a 31. All right, it's Friday, and it's not any Friday. It's final Friday, the last Friday of the month, which is generally a pretty good time around here. But it's not just final Friday. It's also the Friday where we bring in the second winner of a Win the Day of the Expert, a contest we run where we bring in a contractor to spend a day with me and my team to try to better their business. It's gonna be a pretty action-packed day. Okay. Which is about 55 gallons. So we'll keep all the two foot, three foot drops after a stick of pipe, and then we'll turn 
it in to turn them into feet. Probably should explain what Final Friday is, though. Brayden has brought it to my attention that I have not explained to you guys what Final Friday is. So it's the last Friday of every month where we bring the team in all together, whether it's in the office or in retail wholesale or e-commerce or production out in the field, everyone comes together for lunch. Now it's an excellent opportunity for us to get around the same table, to catch up on each other's lives and for the whole team to report on what happened that month and what they see coming up the next month on the horizon. And it's also a great opportunity for new team members to learn more about the company. Everyone is free to ask questions and really have their voice be heard in a group setting. I can't say it enough how much I love Final Friday. So after lunch, there was some playful banter about who could cover a chain link panel the fastest. We had a bunch of panel frames they needed covered. Figured why not turn it into a contest. So we're gonna have a little challenge here in the shop. Chase and John are gonna go head to head and making panels to see who can do it the fastest. Chase is gonna start, John's gonna go, oh, John's gonna start, okay. I'm gonna time them and whoever wins. I got five bucks for the winner. Five bucks for the winner. We got five bucks for the winner. I'm also gonna judge time versus quality too. Yeah. Time versus quality. All right, so after the contest got started, Eric felt like he wasn't getting enough camera time that day, so he decided to join in too. There are a few more entries to the competition. As long as Chase does what he always does, and every one of these he gets on his phone afterwards, <laughs> I will win. John, you remember how well you were doing this? Me either. Yeah. All right, it seems fitting that as supervisor of the shop and building and grounds, Matt remains victorious and undefeated in the panel building competition. Pretty good wrap on Friday. It was originally me and John just going at the competition and then Matt and Eric wanted to join in and just show off. But I did win the original competition and won five bucks. He got Chinese from Eric too, which I still haven't got that. <laughs> Matt and I had a bet going that he could do a panel in under six minutes, and he failed. So I won his $20, and he is a loser. Yeah, all I do is weld, so if I actually had practice like Chase, he gets to do it every single day, constantly. I guarantee my time would be around like Eric's, maybe. So I actually ended up losing like 25 bucks, which is not cool. I guess it was all in, in good fun, so we had a good time. I walked by your tools and I was like, well, slow down. <laughs> Let me see what do we got in here. Now, most Saturdays I can be found here on the YouTube channel hosting a Ask the Experts live show. I either bring on guests, sometimes panels of guests, but today I had on Jason with Tail and Fencing talking about his Win a Day with the Expert experience. To see more of that interview in long form, check out the playlist on this channel. If you'd like to see shorter clips of that live, check out our Clips channel. Guys, it was a long week. We got a lot done. We covered a lot of ground. I hope you guys are liking this format. We are certainly enjoying filming it. Let us know what you think. I love hearing from you guys and interacting with you in the comments section. For now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you the good fences make good neighbors. And I'll see you next week.